to Knitting with Kindred Spirits. I'm glad you decided to join me again. I am your host, Delina, and um, I am so thankful that I've had um, a few subscribers and I appreciate you coming back and watching again. Hopefully we'll get the word out and um, this will become a very enjoyable and um, place, a relaxing place for you to come and knit and talk with your friends. Um, to share your joy and love of crafting and knitting and the fiber arts so well let's see um i don't really have a plan for today i didn't have a plan the last time either um it's kind of warm here it's been in the mid 80s upper 80s low 90s so far um i do live in kansas i am not a huge warm weather person i prefer cold weather um but i'm almost assuming that most knitters do prefer cold weather um, versus anything that requires a whole lot of um, putting down your fiber arts and your um, enjoyability and things like that. Um, I am trying a little bit of a different setup here so we have a little bit better lighting. Um, I'm sitting in front of my window in my living room and um, I kind of have a, a unique situation where I don't get I get a lot of great sunlight in the morning time, but it's really, really bright. Um, and then <clears throat> as the day and the sun sets, I don't get a whole lot. And then I do get some in the evening time. So hopefully this will be better. Um, and I am using a tripod, so it's a little bit closer. So you might be able to see this and I don't have to move around quite so much this time. So we shall see. I just thought today would be a good day to um, sit and talk with you. I um, have um, just about an hour or so before I have to run to Wichita and um, I'm meeting some friends it's kind of exciting actually a friend of mine was asked to be part of the tall grass film festival um, basically what that is is where um, you have 24 hours you're given a theme for a movie um, you get a crew together and you decide what who's going to do what, who's going to be your actors and actresses, and then you write the script, you film the script, you produce the script, and you present the script and the movie, basically. Um, so basically what that is, is you have a 24-hour marathon where you get together with a, either a bunch of people that you've worked with before in the past, or friends, whichever, um, and you put together a film. Most of the people that are going to be involved in this are those that I have worked with um, in melodramas and things like that and they are also my friends um i spend time with them outside of just the theatrical world and things like that so um <clears throat> i'm really kind of looking forward to it uh it's not not very many people get to partake in it so i'm i'm i was quite excited and um, appreciative of the fact that Daryl or DJ had asked me to do this so I'm excited for that um, <clears throat> so I've got about an hour I figured that's time to sit down and video and I was cute so why not um, let's see what have I been working on I guess is a good place to start well as you could see I was knitting as you showed up um, I Currently, I'm working on a washcloth. I'm getting ready to redo my kitchen, and I'm kind of going for like a 50s theme, shabby chic, but I'm gonna do kind of like bright hot pinks, pastel blues, greens, yellows, that thing. Um, and I had a lot of fun knitting the uh, washcloths for my friend's new kitchen because she just moved to, into a, a, a new home. And so, um, I had a lot of fun with that. I believe this is, if I remember right, it's kind of like the honeycomb stitch from the honeycomb cowl, um, but I think it's just a slip stitch pattern. I'm not sure. I found it on Ravelry. I did a couple for her and I liked the pattern. It's super easy, but this is what the fabric looks like and the yarn. I did drop a few stitches here or there because I've been working on it while I was at work or here or, I mean, it's just a washcloth. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm okay with that. But. I love the colors. Um, the yarn looks like this. Hold on, let me get it out of my yarn bowl here. It looks like that. 
I have my phone, I'm using my phone to record and I'm kind of doing the same thing that the Knitworthy girls, not Knitworthy, yeah, Knitworthy girls did, um, where they connected their phone to their actual TV so they can see, um, cause the front facing camera is better. Cause last time I used, or the back facing camera is better. And last time I used the front facing camera and I wasn't particularly happy with the quality, but I figured eh, it's my first time. We'll put something out there and see if it works. So, um, this is actually what the yarn looks like it's got a really high twist it's kind of unique um it was from the sugars and cream um set that you can get at walmart but it was in a little bit different section and it was called sugars and cream twist is what it was called it is a bit rough um and it's kind of hard on the hands i have a little bit of a wrist issue i'm not sure what's going on but um i can't knit on this for very long um, because of that and I think it's partly because of the yarn and I'm knitting on straight needles which I haven't knit on since I was hmm, maybe 12 13 no I take that back I have knit on straight needles just not the metal ones usually I use wooden ones I like the knit, knit picks um, harmony needles those are my favorites so um, but it is living in a bowl that I got at the Great Plains um, Renaissance Festival in Wichita and I was looking for a yarn bowl and I wanted one that was hand thrown. I didn't want something that was like a prefabricated, which most yarn bowls are hand thrown, but I kind of wanted to either meet the person that threw it or um, make sure that I had an idea of where it came from or what it was. Well, I happened to be, I volunteered, well, I helped my friend work her booth in the Wichita Renaissance Festival here in this past April. And um, I looked around because they did have potters there and things like that. There was one from Wellington and he has his own little shop and we're planning on going down there and visiting um, the yarn store sometime this summer. I'm not sure when, but whenever I'm free and she's free, she's got three kiddos, so they'll have to come along. But um, I got this yarn bowl and it is adorable. And I liked it just when I looked at it, I love the colors. It matched my my colors of my apartment. I figured it looked well in my living room. Um, the other one that I was looking at would look better in like my bedroom um, or my sewing room, not so much in the living room, but this is what it looks like. Is it not adorable? It's just too cute here. I'll put it over here. There we go. Anyway, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's adorable. And I love this little um, artwork here. I was like, oh, that's kind of different, you know? And so, like, if you had three different yarns, you could put it in there. And I wasn't even paying attention to what the silhouette was. I don't know if you guys can see that. And when I got back to their tent, I was like, look what I got. I'm so excited. And Maria's like, oh, that's cute. I want one. And she's a crafter too. She's a crocheter. She doesn't knit much. I'm trying to teach her, but the casting on parts got her a little confused. So I think I'm going to probably do the long tail cast on instead of the knit on cast on, which I personally think is easier because you just knit it on. Um, and the long tail cast on is fine, but sometimes it's like, okay, now where do I put the yarn and things like that. So it's a little confusing. But um, anyway, so I saw this bowl. I loved it. I love the peachy color on the inside. I think it's just so pretty and it's nice brown color. Um, you can tell it's been hand thrown. It's a big one. It's a, it's a big size because my hands are pretty small. I have about a six and a half, seven hand, um, like in glove size for the hospital. But um, so anyway, I get back there and I'm holding it like, look what I got, it's so exciting. And she was, I was like, she goes, well, what does it look like? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I just think it's just there. So like, if you have three yarns in there, maybe that's why the bowl was so big. She's like, no, it's a cat. And I was like, what? Cause I love cats. I have a kitty. She's running around here. You'll probably see her cause she thinks I'm talking to her cause there's nobody else here besides her and I. But she was like, yeah, that's, that's an ear there. And this is an ear and this is the nose and the whiskers. And that's probably the tail. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love it even more. I was so excited. Um, so it's been sitting on actually my fireplace. It's a faux fireplace, but it's been sitting on my fireplace with, um, the yarn that I've been working on the washcloths in and it just sits up there you put your your knitting needles in it and it's just kind of cute I do have wooden needles that I used um, 
when I wasn't working on this one just to have something in there just to give it a little decoration and things like that but I just think it is adorable it doesn't have the most consistent glazing as you can see right there but I don't care it's homemade um, I got to talk to the woman that threw the pot um, I think it's I think it's fantastic so um, it wasn't too expensive either I think it was only about 20 25 dollars something like that so that is what I'm working on right now um, I've got a couple other works in progress too I'm more of a monogamous knitter than I am a polygamous knitter um, I do usually have like one simple project that I don't really have to think about um, on the needles and then I have a few others that and somebody's coming <laughs> so if you see a kitty that's what it is hi baby you come here you come here come here nope she says no so um and then I'm today last time I didn't have anything to drink and I got a little parched by the end of the hour but today I have some hot tea it's a little warm, so I don't know how well the hot tea is going to work, but um, I have this adorable teapot. Is that just not too cute? It's like old typeset almost. I just love it. Um, it holds about two small cups that go with this because this is the cup. And then on the inside of the cup has um, a really pretty design. And I got this handy dandy little teapot and pour myself a cup. Ooh, I'm dribbling. Yikes, stripes. Let's see. Move over here and pour so I don't get it all over myself. Anyway, um, this teapot I got actually at the hospital where I work in their little gift shop. Um, they have a really great little gift shop there. Um, it's got a lot of unique and individual things. So I've, I've enjoyed it quite a bit um, whenever I go in there and see them. And it's ran by a bunch of um, volunteer ladies that are older and um, they used to be called the Pink Ladies, which I think is adorable. Uh, but our hospital colors changed and when we went to a different hospital name and color, um, they went to like a really bright blue, kind of like my shirt today. But um, it's super cute, but I'm going to try my tea. Mm, it's good. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. And then I have a little treat. Probably not while I'm uh, filming, but I used to love sex looks when I was a kid. And I don't know if any of you, probably from the States, knew these. And basically what they are, they're little candy balls. And um, they're kind of like M&Ms, but they're better. The coating on the outside has a little bit of a flavor it's not just chocolate and I love M&Ms too but um, these just remind me of when I was a kid and at Easter time um, at I found them last year I think it was last year maybe the year before I don't know um, at Hobby Lobby at Easter time and I was like oh my gosh so I bought a bag and they lasted for a while and it, no it must have been two years ago and then um, this year I found them at Walmart so I bought a bag but they're super good. Little tiny little treats of chocolate. You get a roll or two and there you go. You have something nice. Um, I guess I can tell you what kind of tea I'm drinking. I love just regular black English tea most of the time. I'm not a real frou frou fancy person. I don't mind in the summertime having like um, maybe a raspberry, just like one raspberry tea bag thrown in with... The rest of my like tea when I make sun tea um, it's starting to get to that season so I'll start making some sun tea and I'll probably be drinking that instead of hot tea because um, I don't like hot stuff in the summertime um, but I love Tazo it's the English breakfast it's awake um, it's probably the most coffee like tea that I've seen come here Amy well come here come here Nope, she's gonna run away. <laughs> she's 14, she'll be 15 in August. Um, so she's getting up there. Um, super, super sweet kitty, sometimes. Sometimes she's not, she can be a little cranky, but that's okay. I love her anyway, so. 
anyway, back to the tea. I usually like black teas. Um, I like English breakfast, almost pretty much any kind. Um, uh, the Awake, I love an iced tea. Um, they have this at Starbucks, or they used to. I haven't been there yet this summer to check out their um, flavorings of teas, because I know they had changed some of their teas and things like that, but I don't know. Um, I really don't have, like I said, much to talk to you about. I have basket of things over here. Um, I did uh, cast on a new shawl. It is... I'm only like maybe 10 rows in. It's nothing particularly particularly spectacular. No, it's not what I thought. It is one of the Boo Knits In Love Collection shawls. And I have bought bananas yesterday and I got some um, uh, flies or gnats very aggravating but I won't show you the um, pattern of course but this is what the you see that yeah there you go this is what the shawl will look like I think it'll be really pretty and I started that in the yarn that I showed you last week or two weeks ago actually it's probably three now but it's my dry run for my niece's wedding shawl that I plan on wearing. Um, it is in Patent's Lace. Ooh, it's really bright. Sorry. Now that's a pretty, it's a little brighter there than what it is in real life. <laughs> Excuse me, I got the hiccups now. But yeah, I'm in mid row, so that doesn't really show you guys much, but I cast it on yesterday. Um, my friend Maria and her girls, or her kids, and I, and one of her friends, we went to the Oklahoma City Zoo. Um, so we made a little road trip out of it, and this was what I got cast on. It doesn't look like much. <laughs> um, it's really just the garter tab and maybe a few, I guess it would be this way, the garter tab and maybe a few, um, rows after that nothing major um it's kind of hard sometimes to <clears throat> i give props to you moms that knit out there when you have kids around because it's a little difficult at times when you have kids that are just like Wah! all the time so oh and then this is in my um ghoulish sister bag i think i showed this last week to you i love it I only have two project bags, but I'm working on that. I do so, and I did um, per, uh, participate in a swap at um, Little Bobbin's Knits, and um, she paired me up with someone from uh, Germany, um, and so we swapped, and I sent her a project bag, and I really liked how it turned out. It was a little on the small side, so I think this next time I'll probably make it a little bigger. But since that was kind of, I guess you could call my dry run, um, I thought I'd make some project bags for myself. And if they do okay, and if you guys happen to like them, I do have an Etsy store. I don't have much in it. Um, it's called the Pink Peacock One. Um, it is on Etsy. There's nothing in it right now. Um, it primarily is for like historical garments and costumes that I make to order for people that either I know. It's just a way for me to get my name out there. Um, for me to keep track of what sales I do, um, different things like that. <clears throat> Sometimes people don't always have money, so I can put it on, you know, like little bits at a time. So like, let's say $75 and then they can pay me $75 through PayPal that way or through a credit card. And it kind of just keeps track of it versus just me getting it and all of that. So I think that's a, a good, a good way to do that but if it does if you guys do like this you might leave me a comment down below and um, tell me um, what you think of the fabric I'm going to show you here in a little bit um, and to see if um, you would like me to throw some of those in the shop if you're interested I'll, I'll probably sell them not for very much but um, yeah, so I'll show you the fabric. I did get several different types, but I am a pink girl, so I bought these initially for myself to make myself 
um, project bags. Um, pink is my favorite color. Pink and turquoise is what my sewing room is in. Uh, so I planned on just, you know, if I'm going to have them out, I might as well put them out in my sewing room. But eventually someday I'll so, uh, film in there, but ugh, it's, it's pretty nice. I don't know. Um, the <laughs> looks like my fabric bin exploded in there because I've been working on a steampunk outfit. We have steampunk coming up this weekend. So, all right, this is one of the first items that I picked out. Isn't that sweet? It's got pink birds, yellow birds, just some green. I haven't decided if this is going to be a lining or an outside. Um, it could be either. I have plenty to at least make two bags out of each of these. Some of them I have more than that. So that is that. And then this is just a stripey fabric that I thought could be um, a lining fabric also. It's just super cute. And I kind of got the stripey fabric to go with this one, which I have quite a bit of. Um, so I love that, but I thought the stripe would be cute with it. But I also then, after I already have this cut, the stripe cut, but the stripe would be cute with this too, right? That'd be cute. Then after I also had that cut, I love polka dots. I do, I do, I do. Um, if I could wear polka dots every day, I probably would, at least in some form or another. But I also found this combo, which I really like this one better with it than the stripe, which I think is adorable. Because it kind of, you know, the polka dot mimics, and this would be on the inside and this would be on the outside, so. I don't know. But. And then, those are kind of like my pink genre. Well, it's not my only one, but then I got these pretty cherry blossoms. And I thought about making a bag for my friend Maria. Um, she likes cherry blossoms and um, red and turquoise. So, but I actually initially had bought some of this fabric because I thought it would be cute to put in embroidery hoops and put it in my kitchen because these are kind of the colors I want that like that teal and not so much red but more like a hot pink you know kind of like this color pink if not maybe a little bit brighter pink um, in my kitchen kind of florally shabby chic but not like shabby chic I love shabby chic most of my house is shabby chic but I want each room of my place is a little bit different um, so it would be fun to have something a little different but this is the fabric that I got for that I love that and then this is the fabric that I got for the lining and I loved this red polka dot I got quite a bit of this because I thought that um, if I didn't use it for lining for this or if I didn't ever actually make this into a bag and used it for something else I have enough of this I could probably make a circular skirt out of for myself just to wear because it's just super cute but I thought those two went well together oh I think I need to open my blinds hold on some shadows coming the sun has moved a little bit since I started filming so and then this is the one that I initially bought to make my project like a big project bag out of um, kind of like a tote um, but I love it I just absolutely love it the pink and the brown and the gray it's got polka dots and flowers and oh it's just so adorable and I wasn't sure what I wanted to use for the inside for this. I have some pink and gray chevron, but I thought since this was pretty, um, not loud, but it does have a pattern to it, that something a little bit more simple. And then I also found this one, which I think is adorable. I still have a shadow and I'm not sure what that's about, but oh well, I'm sorry. Um, I just love this, so I thought these two would be really good together so and this would be the lining for that so those are my I guess part of my works in progress um, 
or my hopes and progress would be a better uh, <laughs> um, term for that, I suppose. I hope everything's treating you well. I hope life hasn't gotten gotten you down. Um, it's always always good to think positive, even though it's hard sometimes. So, um, one of my other works in progress, I guess you could call it, is my socks. I have finished them. Um, I just have to Kitchener the toe on this one. So I, ah, I lost stitches. Hold on. Yikes, stripes. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. God. Holy crappers. A cracker. Okay. Just have to Kitchener the stitch on this toe. So um, it's not the best. Like I said, it's my first time ever making socks. I did make slippers when I was a kid. Um, so I had done short rows before, I think, because I remember doing something very similar to the heel flap and all of that. But that was a long time ago, at least 20 years ago, no, probably 25. But um, So I worked on my high Hiya Sharps. And then I also had a set of carbons which I think they are in my bag over there. So um, I wanted to do them kind of both at the same time. So I had had, had the pair of carbon two points. Um, US two, 2.75 millimeter, sorry. Um, and then uh, I already had those and I tried them the first, like when I first cast this sock on. Um, and I didn't really like them. Uh, they seem to have a little bit of a drag and the join between like the metal part and the carbon shaft just seemed to have a little bit of a snaggle. Uh, <clears throat> I personally, my favorite type of knitting needle is the um, Knit Picks Harmony Wood. I have the circular needles in most of the straights. Um, my parents gave me the circular needle set for Christmas this last year. And I think that's partly maybe why I started back into knitting full force was because I had every size so didn't matter what project I wanted to start on I could just start on it and it was like woohoo yippee um but I uh started with the carbons from Knitter's Pride and they were okay I didn't dislike them but I didn't love them so I was like well I'll just do both socks at the same time and I'll see what other kind of size twos that I can find US twos so I went over to um I guess you would call it my local yarn store even though it's like an hour away um and uh went in there and all they had was the Haya Haya they didn't have the Haya Haya Sharps they just had Haya Haya um I'd had the Haya Haya bamboo before and they're okay I don't I'm not a huge fan of bamboo especially the clover bamboo oh those things are awful um I do like the Haya Haya bamboo better I've used those um I made a couple baby hats one time, um, that really long, like gnomey ones that's red, white, and striped, red and white striped. Um, a friend of mine wanted that for her baby's um, Christmas picture. So I made her one of those. That was the first time I'd, I think I'd ever worked in like true color work where you have to float the, the um, yarn over. So, um, but the yarn store had DPNs and the Haya Haya, and then they had like the nine inch circular needles. And I just, I didn't know if I would like the circular needle, like the nine inch circular needle. If any of you have ever knitted with one of those, like knitted socks with that, let me know. Um, I'm kind of interested to see how it works because I don't dislike double points. In fact, in fact I actually enjoy double points. Um, it's kind of, Fun, you know and and like Bri being Brianne from the Noteworthy podcast says it's magical to people if you're doing it out in public and they're like what are you doing yeah it's just amazing but um so I got the Haya Haya back to the point of my story sorry I'm just gonna kind of talk to you like we're friends and if you um don't like rambly conversations because I'm a bit of a magpie or a squirrel, you know, it's like, oh, squirrel. I'll go, kind of go off on tangents, but um, this is the Haya Haya, and I love these so much better than I did the Carbons. Um, I did them kind of at the same time. I did like the cuff on one down to a certain point where I started getting ready to do the heel flap, 
and then I started the other one and did that and then I did the heel flap on one and then I did the heel flap on the other one and then I did turn the heel you know you get it you understand um the only thing is this was the first one because I started off doing the ribbing on the carbons um and then I did the ribbing on this one but this one was the first one I actually started working on the actual foot part and I noticed that it does this and is that what you would call laddering I don't know it was where I had the two back um needles together. Um, I don't know if it was just that I wasn't tightening my yarn tight enough as I went from one needle to the other. I don't know how to fix that. I did eventually fix it down here. I didn't have that issue at all down here. Um, a little bit, maybe right there, but not bad. Not like what it is down here. So I'm not sure, but um, I, I'm pleased with how they turned out. I'm excited to wear them. Um, we'll see how, how good they are. When I get done but let me show you the actual finished sock I ha do have one that's actually done I still have to weave in my ends so um the toe is a bit weird but oh well but that's the Kitchener stitch it's not too bad for my first time I didn't think and then this is um the decreases which looked okay I, I mean my toe doesn't look like that so we'll see how it works out I don't know but um I think it looks pretty good for a pair of socks in my first ones why not right I didn't think it turned out half bad I'm quite pleased actually um, I do have another set of um, sock yarn that I think I'm ready um, to try my next pair um, I might make them a little bit longer I don't know well I'm gonna wear these first before I think I start another pair of socks but the only thing is 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 the heel supposed to look like this or that I don't I don't I don't think it's supposed to but I I did it as the pattern red but maybe I'm just not doing something right so and maybe it's the variegation of the yarn I, I don't know but we'll see I don't know um I haven't washed or blocked them I needed to get some um blo blocking soap or wool soap so in my little bag of tricks basket basket of tricks I did get some mucolin which I didn't know what kind to get because my mom never blocked or washed anything that she did my grandma did knit with wool and things like that and she probably did it but I just didn't know about it I don't know why it was never really talked about when I was a kid um, but I know um, Kimper from the um, junk yarn podcast. She uses she uses eucalyn. I do have a bit of an issue with um, like scents in certain things, so I wanted to make sure I got something that wasn't going to give me a headache because it will bring on migraines if I smell too much smelly stuff. Um, so when I was at my local yarn store, probably last week, because I finished, I had gotten down to the dough, the dough. Woo! the toe decreases on one of my socks and gotten it completely off and then I worked on the second one yesterday on the way to Oklahoma City which is about a two-hour trip um, and then I got to the Kitchener stitch and I did one Kitchener stitch in the car which went well I mean it was fine but when you have three kids that are under the age of 10 asking how much longer yeah and they're your children it's kind of hard to focus so um, but this is a no rinse delicate wash. Um, it's eucalyn and it doesn't have any scent. It has a clean scent, but it doesn't have any like perfume or anything like that in it. Um, it says you can machine wash. Or use um, just in the by hand which is what I'll probably do the first pair of socks that I have and then it's printed in oh that must be the label It's printed in Canada it's non-toxic um, it must be produced in Canada too so it was five dollars and twenty cents at my local yarn shop I'm sure you can probably order it this is a pretty small bottle but I wanted to try it first before I ordered anything too large and I figured I don't have a whole lot of like natural wool items um i'm trying to work more with natural fibers um but that's just wasn't what i had 
before in the past. I was taught how to use acrylic and all of that. So, and I talked a little bit about that in the last show. Quite a bit of yarn left from my socks. I'm kind of excited. See, that's a pretty good size. Um, I just remembered that I did not tell you the name of that yarn. Um, I told you the name, but I didn't tell you the color. It was Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering in Happy Valley. And that's that. And then it, it was 357 yards, 100 grams in the fingering weights. It's a really pretty nice yarn. Um, I know once I worked with it, it got a little bit softer. It started to bloom a little bit more and it made it nicer to handle. Um, it does have a pretty tight twist to it. So I think it probably will wear well. I don't know. But the colorway is really pretty. And I got that off of nitpicks.com. I didn't want to go with something like $25 a skein, like Madeline Tosh or anything like that for um, like my first couple pairs of socks, just in case if I didn't really care for them and things. So um, I will probably have that toe kitchener this afternoon or this evening after... Um, when I um, head over to Wichita to that meeting, um, I'll probably work either work on this or I'll do something else. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. So um, that's what that is. And then let's see. So that was kind of like a half finished project. Half it was a ho, hey, ho, hey, ho. Um, so. I'm going to show you, I don't have a whole lot of finished projects other than that to show you. Um, I did get one of the, um, sorry, this chair is awful creaky and I didn't realize it. So I will have to use something else the next time. Um, one, I was working, what I was working on last time was the um, reading rest for my nurse techs at the hospital. And I did get one finished. Um, I gave it to her and then the next day she got fired. So I kind of got a little disheartened. We're not really sure what happened. Um, we're friends. I mean, we don't hang out outside of the hospital much, but I mean, we talk to each other on Facebook and you know, and we text each other and I'm not really sure what happened. Um, and nobody's really sure what happened. Um, our boss, of course, can't say because that would be infringing on her privacy, the person that got let go's privacy. I did message her and ask her if she was doing okay, and she just said that her world had been thrown upside down. And <clears throat> I just, I'm just really concerned because she's, um, she doesn't seem like an untrustworthy person or someone that would. do something that would warrant being fired on the spot and being so cagey um so i don't know if it had something to do with like the hipaa violation or perhaps like identity theft i don't know because i do work with um i work on a pediatric it's a called a women and children's services unit um so we do pediatric women's surgeries and then um I also float over to the labor and delivery unit, which is um, where they have babies and things like that. So that that is the only thing I can think of as hush hush as has been. Um, it's just kind of weird. So after that, and I gave hers hers first, um, and then I was working on a couple others, or was going to. Uh, I got a little disheartened. I was like, Ooh, I don't know. Um, so I have the others. I probably just won't get them finished. Maybe I'll just give them to them when it gets closer to their birthdays or maybe keep on to it keep them keep a hold of them until Christmas and give them at Christmas time because um, they know I appreciate them greatly and things like that so I don't know we'll see it's just been very odd week so but one of my other finished objects that I just finished this past <laughs> this is my baby maybe she can say hi can you say hi Oh, come over there. Come over there. Hi. Hi. This is Stinky. This is Mushu. I've had her since she was about two weeks old. I did raise her with a bottle for the first couple weeks of her life. Um, and uh, so she's she's my baby. 
She can say hi whenever she wants to. Who knows? She might jump up in the background. This is one of her favorite places to lay. So I kind of like this setup. You can kind of see a little bit of my house. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Got good lighting, kind of. I don't know. We'll see. But So back to the finished objects. Um, I wanted, for the Renaissance Festivals, I needed a bag that I could just carry and not worry really about it. Um, I just needed something to put, you know, like my phone and my wallet and um, maybe some chapstick or something in that would work well and kind of go with the outfit that I was wearing. Um, be kind of historically correct, because I am into that, you know, making sure that at least it's somewhat accurate because people see you and then you're like, they think oh that's what they really wore and then they'll go out and buy a costume because they think they're being authentic and things like that and they're really not so not that renaissance festivals are the most authentic thing but it's still nice but i went on ravelry and i found um this pattern for just a, like a messenger bag super easy super cute i never felt it anything before so i was quite excited to do that um i ordered some knit picks um wool of the andes and this is the bag i love it this one had a little bit of heather in it and then that one i think was called current and then this one i think was like a sagey green i'm not rem i can't remember this one was like hunter and current I think is this one and then I'm not sure what this one was but um, it's a super simple bag it just this is kind of hard to show sorry but it's big enough that it could probably hold like a iPad um, and a few maybe even a book I blocked it with one of my nursing textbooks and then the handle was um, felted too so you knit it flat and then you seam it together so, and this is what the inside looks like. So I didn't think I did too bad of a job at seaming it. But I really, I almost kind of like it inside out, but I don't know. Um, the pattern was super easy. You just knit stockinette stitch for like 13 inches. And I think you cast on like 72 stitches something, or maybe 172. I don't remember. Because um, you work this part, it's flat. And um, you start at one end, you work up to where the ch change color change is, and then you do that color change, and then you do this one. I think these were like 13 inches, and then maybe like 9, and then another 13 or something like that. Um, and then on the side panels, you just <clears throat> knit whatever the corresponding color was um hold on i need to plug my phone in so give me just a minute okay sorry about that i thought i had enough battery but i guess i didn't Anyway, um, back to this. In the picture of the first, like the designer of it, she had buttons and like buttonholes, but I didn't really want that because I wasn't putting anything, like I wanted this to carry other bags in, like have other bags carried in it. So it does cross your body. I made it a little short and being a fluffy girl, if you were skinny, this would probably be the right length, but I wished I would have left at least another inch of the handle out because it would be better, but it still works for over, over the shoulder. Um, I think I will probably use it quite a bit. Um, I've only used it the once, but this would work even for like Cowtown, which is Victorian versus Renaissance. Um, and I loved how it felt it. I mean, I think it's so pretty. It's great colors. So I enjoy it. It's fun, but that's a finished object. No, it didn't happen this last week or last couple weeks, but it's a finished object. That's something that I've made, so that was fun. Um, let's see. What else to talk about? Let's see. The next project up on my needles, or maybe in 
congruently with what I'm working on and I might choose to do this instead of the one that I'm working on that's the patent lace. I talked about last time um, that I had some Madeline Tosh in Molly Ringwald. This is the color. It's gorgeous color. It's kind of a tonal salmon pink color. It's got some brighter, not bright, but brighter pink and then more creamy colors. Um, and I know last time I had bagged a little bit on this saying that I didn't care for the Madeline Tosh. This is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. Um, it's 100% superwash merino wool, fingering 420 yards, 384 meters. Um, it says you're supposed to, hand dyed in Texas. And the wool is from South Africa. So, um, I know I was bagging on it a little bit, but saying that it wasn't very soft, which I don't know if the other stain, maybe that was the first one that I picked up, it seemed a little bit scratchier. Um, but once I unhanked it, because I was getting ready to wind it off before I decided to do this, but I don't have a Swift, a yarn Swift. Um, I'm a, I have one on order. I ordered it from Knit Picks maybe a week ago. I keep thinking it's going to show up any time. That's partly why I haven't balled this up but or um caked it up <clears throat> so yeah i don't i don't know the last time i did that which I, when i caked it up was for my socks and i have a picture on instagram and it is quite hilarious on how i ended up doing that because none of my chairs are wide enough to hold this because i can run my ball winder hand wise around it but None of them are wide enough to hold this out. And I don't have, like, I'm single, so I don't have anybody to help hold while I do that. Um, and usually I'm doing crafting in the middle of the night. So, um, yeah, sometimes that doesn't work real well. So I had decided to use my feet. It worked great. It's hilarious. Um, I did post it on Instagram. So uh, if you want to check it out, you can. Um, I'll have the links and stuff down below in the down bar down there. So I know I forgot to do that last time. I'm so sorry. Um, it just kind of slipped my mind. I was so excited to get the podcast up and out there to see if people liked me. You really like me. Um, so yeah, this is horrible now, but I think I might actually cake this up before I go to Wichita and work on this tonight. I have a different shawl in mind and it's on my project page and I don't have internet in my home. I just usually use my phone and it does have a hotspot, but I can't use a hotspot while I'm recording. So, um, I will have to put the pattern link down below. Um, but it's, this one's so much softer than what I was expecting it to be. So from uh, the other one, I have two skeins, so it should be good. That's 820 yards, so it should be more than enough, but I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with it, so um, I figured, why not? You know, might as well splurge a little bit. So that is what I'm working on there. Um, then, let's see, I guess, I kind of love on Dan and Kay's um, The Bakery Bears podcast, they have what's on your bookshelf. Um, I'm an avid reader. I usually listen to more audiobooks. Um, I love Audible. Um, it's a great, great resource, especially if you are a knitter or a crafter, because then you get to actually um, read or listen to the books while you're crafting. So you get to do two things that you love. Um, I started audiobooks when I was in college. Um, I've only been a registered nurse for about the past five years. I started school back, you know, when you graduate high school and um, everybody expects you to go to school and I wanted to go to school and I did go to school. Um, I initially I went to school to be a teacher. Um, I had about a year and a half of just the general education, you know, like chemistry, English, math, you know, that type of thing out of the way. But in the back of my mind, I was like, always thought I either wanted to be a teacher or a nurse. Um, and then I decided to 
be a nurse because the boy that I had been seeing even through high school we had dated for about five years and I was what 20 maybe at this time yeah um, he had wanted to get married he was gonna be a preacher and he was he was a little bit younger than me and he was graduating from high school and he was going to Waxahachie Texas to college to seminary school and so I we didn't necessarily want to we were okay waiting you know like another year or so until I was done with school um, or two years but I didn't want to wait because he was planning on getting his doctorate and that was gonna be quite a long time and so I needed something that was a little bit more flexible and I looked into the nursing program at where I live and so we I decided to go ahead and um, apply and I got accepted so I was like woohoo so I kind of changed gears there for a while and um, I was in the nursing program here at my local community college um, then I was between my summer of my first year of nursing school and my summer of my second year of nursing school he was killed in a car accident he was home on summer vacation and he was working at Walmart um, and it was his birthday and he was on his way home um, it was about mm, maybe 35 40 minutes from where he we grew up in the same area I grew up in a town about eight miles away from where he grew up which was where I went to school um, but he was he'd worked the night shift he was on his way home from work because it was his birthday and he wanted to spend time with his family and um, he fell asleep behind the wheel and crossed the center line and um, he and another set of kids from the same my same hometown <clears throat> were killed in a car accident um, just Joseph and um, this other boy he was only 16 were killed but the others were seriously injured but so after that I went ahead and went back to school my second year of nursing school but I just it was so devastating um, I just didn't have the heart to continue on um, in nursing school it was just too much so I went ahead and decided to quit school um, worst probably mistake of my life but I don't think I ever would have succeeded even if I had continued passing boards and things like that but I still worked at the hospital and I worked there for probably I've worked at the hospital 16 years and then I think I worked there for maybe six or seven before I decided to go back to school and then I just worked slowly through school um, but when I did decide to go back to school I had definitely decided that nursing was a career for me um, I love helping people I always have um, the human body is very um, interesting to me and I enjoy that part of learning like mechanics of it and things like that so um, I went decided to go back to school and I went to um, Wichita State University which is about an hour away I just drove back and forth um, and I wanted to get my bachelor's degree and then I do plan on going back and getting like my master's and things like that so we shall see but I'm not quite sure how I got out on that rant but oh yes audiobooks <laughs> sorry squirrel I apologize I know this is an editing podcast you don't care about my life but you know I'm here to talk to girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever kind of friends you are you know I welcome all um but the audiobooks when I was driving back and forth to school I had two hours a day um, and I went to school Monday through Friday basically whether it was clinicals or actual classwork um, and then I worked at nighttime so there were some days where it was pretty long days where sometimes I'd be up for like 36 to 48 hours um, depending on the day um, I needed something to keep me engaged and entertained while I was driving um, and I missed reading that was one of the biggest things that I had missed so when I was in going to school I had borrowed quite a few um, audiobooks from the library and things like that and um, I was hooked probably Janet Ivanovich I think I listened to all of her um, Stephanie Plum novels which are a hoot and a half if you've ever had a chance to read them you should do that it is hilarious um, holy cow we're already at an hour 
I'm, I will try to speed through this. <laughs> but Kay and Dan um, Jones on the Bakery Bear podcast, they have a what's on your bookshelf. So I thought I would add a little bit of maybe either what I'm listening to or what I'm actually reading um, in my podcast as well, which I love. So um, I'll show you what I'm getting ready to read this summer. I have several books that I have purchased, but this is by Liz Trenow. Trinell, I think is how you pronounce it. It's called The Forgotten Seamstress. It's a novel. It's a really pretty cover and that's kind of what caught my eye. I do have a Kindle and most of the time I will um, uh, read on my Kindle just because I can carry it with me and um, it's pretty convenient to take to work and things like that and I keep it in my purse all the time so um, the back cover says she kept her secret for a lifetime a shy girl with no family Maria knows she's lucky to have landed in the sewing room of a loyal of the royal household before World War one casts its shadow she catches the eye of the Prince of Wales a glamorous glamorous and intense gentleman but her life takes a far darker turn and soon all she has left is a fantastical story about her time at Buckingham Palace decades later Caroline Meadows discovers a beautiful quilt in her mo mother's attic. When she can't figure out the meaning of the message embroidered into its lining, she embarks on the quest to reveal its mystery, a puzzle that only seems to grow more important to her own heart. As Caroline pieces together the secret history of this quilt, she comes closer and closer to the truth about Maria. Um, so it sounds like it's going to be a really good book. I will let you know. I haven't started it yet. I just finished um, another book on my um, Kindle that was okay. It wasn't the greatest. That's why I'm not going to review it, but I can't wait to start this. Um, so uh, I'm also listening to the Outlander series on Audible. So I listen to that usually when I'm in the car or whatever. But Now let's move on to fun stuff that I have purchased. Um, nothing particularly fantastical, but I did get some yarn and I'm not going to take, let's see, who is it? Is it Knitting with the Expat? Is that who it is? No, it's Juniper Grace, which I love Juniper Grace's pod podcast. If you have not watched that or listened to it, it's amazing. I know that um, Kimper from Junk Yarn had recommended her a couple different times um, of podcasts that she listened to and things like that. And I just never went to go check her out. And then one time um, I wanted Kimper's sock pattern and I couldn't remember the name of it. So I just went to her website, junkyarn.com, I believe is what it is. And um, she had blogs that I like to watch or, or not blogs podcasts that I like to watch and um so I was just going through seeing you know who doesn't want another podcast to watch that's like really speaks to your heart and things like that there everybody has their own unique individuality and take on podcasting and vlogcasting so um it's always kind of nice to find something that really works well for you and speaks to you and things like that so um I um found Juniper Grace on there and she I think it was her it's either her or the expat um, they said that they weren't gonna take things out of the crinkly bags because that always means that it's something exciting is going to happen um, and I completely and utter, utterly um, wholeheartedly agree with that because every time I hear that crinkly it's like Ooh. and I know if those of you that are listening with earphones and things like that it can be a little um, loud but you'll be all right I promise so every episode I hope to have a little bit of something about Anna Green Gables in it since we are knitting with kindred spirits it's not going to just be a knitting podcast I am going to do some other crafting like sewing and crochet and I do tat some not a whole lot but um so it's going to be kind of a mix of everything but every episode I hope to have at least one something that has to do with Anna Green Gables whether it's um a quote from the book or something I don't know but my one Anne of Green Gables um, touch this week is going to be this yarn and it is so my colors it is kind of a deep burgundy going into almost a magenta um, pink and then it goes into a green um, it is just gorgeous it is from Measley's Knits it's neasleys.etsy.com 
and it's a merino cashmere nylon blend. It's 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. It's 100 grams. And you can machine wash it um, and tumble dry or hand wash either or but it's called June evening and I had she has this um, a couple skein or one skein on her website um, on the Etsy site but I wanted to make sure that I had plenty to make something out of I have no idea what I'm gonna make with this I just happen to be ugh, it's just so pretty I just happen to be um, brain fart Surfing Etsy, I guess is what you would call it. Searching Etsy, Etsy. And um, I just put Anna Green Gable stuff. And so um, I have a, another thing that I'm gonna share with you next week that, um, I don't know if this is gonna be weekly or bi-weekly. I don't think I'm gonna have enough maybe to do this weekly, unless you guys are okay with me adding older things that I've done or other types of crafty things or, um, just sit and chit chat with you maybe I don't know but um, she, I just happened to put this in there and it had the June evening and she has a lovely little quote from the book about the June evening and the colors of the like because it's even got some sky bluish purple in there um, but it's perfect I mean you read the passage and oh, it's just gorgeous and it's soft um, it does have a little bit of a almost like a vinegar smell so I don't know if maybe she used vinegar to set the dye because I know that's um like it can be um, used for that so I'm sure once it's worked up it doesn't smell that bad but it doesn't have a particularly woolly smell but I got two skeins I'm so excited she dyed them up just specially for me but she will dye some up for you too but I just, oh, it's just gorgeous. I love it. I absolutely love it. So, anyway, but um, I will let you know what I plan to make with this. So, um, well, I think that's about all I have time for today. Um, we are just a little bit over an hour. Um, I am so happy that you decided to come and join me. Um, I do appreciate you coming, and uh, I've been excited to see that we've had about 30 views probably three or four of them have been my own um, and I think we're up to five subscribers so welcome um, and I'm so excited that you're here with me um, and I kind of want us this to be a, a collaboration um, so if you can um, those that have subscribed put down in the down bar or in the comment section what you would like to see on the podcast or what you've liked so far that I've done that you want to want me to keep around um I'm not really into the I mean I get like having the individual sections and stuff like that but I kind of wanted this to be a little bit more organic um and not quite so structured structure is a good thing but this is something fun so um that's kind of what I'm looking forward to, um, to hear from you guys. If you can, um, hit the subscribe button if you're the first time watchers, or if you're a returning watcher, hit the like button, because that means that more people will find me. Um, and then we can continue with this podcast if you really like Anna Green Gables and just me sitting here plattering on. So, um, but I just want to say thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And um, I'm going to send some knitted hearts from my house to yours, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.